Greetings and welcome to another episode of Trippy Food. We're doing a road trip today and we are in Venice, California. Well, technically, it's not Venice, California. Te technically, it is Los Angeles, California, but we're in the Venice neighborhood. Now, Venice wasn't always a neighborhood of Los Angeles. It was originally founded and built in 1905. It was originally a city, but in the 1920s, it was next to the city of Los Angeles. So, we're here right now. We're on Windward Avenue. And as you can see behind me up here is the iconic Venice sign that hangs there. You've probably seen that in a bunch of pictures. And if you keep going down Windward and you keep and you head to the beach, you'll be at the foot of what was the largest of the amusement piers. At one point in time, between 1900 and the 1960s, there was something like 16 different amusement piers. Some of them burnt down, uh, some of them rebuilt. The last one I think was built in 1959. It was actually built to compete with uh, Disney, which had just opened up around the same time. So we're gonna walk up here and see where the old pier was, the big old pier was. And then we're going to maybe go to the fishing pier, take a look at the fishing pier, head down the boardwalk, down at uh, what everyone knows is Venice Beach probably take a look at the uh, canals as well. So we'll see what Venice was, what Venice is. Welcome, let's go. The first buildings that were constructed were built in Venetian style and the column capitals included likenesses of Abbot Kinney, who built them, and a woman named Nettie Bauck. So almost every building had these columns on top of it. A lot of them aren't there anymore, but you can see as we go that a lot of those buildings will still have those. The thing about Venice is that it used to have a lot of graffiti and murals uh, and sometimes it was hard to tell which was which but it seems like over the years they decided they wanted to kind of clean the city up maybe they, they were thinking it was attracting the wrong kind of people or it was uh, eyesore so there's not as many murals as there used to be it used to be incredible like almost every building every wall um, had some sort of mural or something on it uh, that's that's cut down a lot but uh, but there's still some interesting artwork and we'll check some of that out too All right, right now we are on Venice Fishing Pier. The current fishing pier first opened in 1964. It's been closed various times to repair storm damage. The current pier is 1,310 feet long. It was built in 1997. From 1900 to 1960s, there was at least 12 amusement piers between Venice and Santa Monica. The largest, which was Venice Amusement Pier. So that was out there where you can see the uh, outcropping of rocks and the sandbar that goes out there. That's where the Venice Amusement Pier was. It opened in 1905. It's at the foot of Windward Avenue, but it was destroyed in well, it was destroyed in fire in 1920, but it was rebuilt, you know, reopened in 1921, but it closed for good in 1946. In 1958, they opened a huge park, Pacific Ocean Park, which was an amusement pier. And that was an ocean park, which is a little bit closer to Santa Monica. Uh, it only lasted nine years. These walls behind me are called the Venice Art Walls. And originally, they were built in 1961 as part of the Venice Pavilion. So uh, even while the Venice Pavilion was still standing, and this is just the remnants of it, that uh, people would come by and uh, graffiti it. Some of them pretty elaborate, actually. And uh, what happened is they tore the pavilion down, but then this is one of the few places in the city of Los Angeles where it's actually legal to put graffiti 
be on these walls. And sometimes it gets pretty elaborate as to um, what some people are doing. So it's always fun to just come out here and watch if you can stand the smell of spray paint. Full disclosure, Venice Beach was designated as the most dangerous beach in the country based on an Outforia study, which was rated based on reported crimes, thefts, and robberies, violent crimes, air and water pollution, surf zone, and lightning fatalities, shark attacks, and average high temperatures. That shouldn't dissuade you from visiting. It's a crazy collection of eclectica that's part old-time nostalgia, part stoner mecca, and part sideshow. Speaking of sideshows, from 2006 to 2017, Venice Beach was home to the appropriately named Venice Beach Freak Show, a tiny venue that was half performance art, half curiosity museum, founded by music producer Todd Ray. And I know what you're thinking, Val, isn't Venice Beach itself a freak show? Well, yeah, but for $5 you could see live two-headed animals, Rocky the five-legged dog, you could staple tips to Digger the Sadu Hobo from Scotland, watch more camera nails up his nose and swallow swords, and check out performances by Electra and Rubber Girl. It was a subject of an AMC reality show from 2013 to 2014, but they closed in 2017 when the property was acquired by Snapchat. Muscle Beach started as a WPA project in 1934. It was next to the Santa Monica Pier. There's still acrobatic devices in that location, but the weightlifting platform as part of Muscle Beach was built farther down Venice Beach in 1952. Speaking of movies, Venice Beach was a filming location for a multitude of movies and TV shows including A Nightmare on Elm Street, American History X, Falling Down, The Doors, Xanadu, L.A. Story, Mixed Nuts, Get Shorty, and, and hundreds more. There's a variety of food on Venice Beach, but most of it's comfort or bizarre food, similar to what you'd find at a country fair. There's also some street food with people selling from carts on the boardwalk, including LA's famous Danger Dog. This is pretty cool. We're walking along the boardwalk and we find Charlie's Deli. What's cool about that is that Charlie's Deli is from Portland, Oregon. So, you know, a little more Portland, Oregon, why not? So I decided to get a sandwich, and what I got was the brisket and bacon. They make their own brisket here. It has Tillamook cheese. How can you go wrong? And then for chips, I haven't seen these before. Dirty Deli-style potato chips Maui onion flavor. So let's give it a shot. Those are good. Lots of onion flavor. Let's take a bite of this. 
really looking forward to this. Oh, that's so good. Smoky, savory, it's tender. That's a good sandwich. I gotta get up to Portland soon though. Nice to find another Portland transplant. That's a thumbs up. About a block up the street from Charlie's Deli on Westminster Ave are the Bazaar El Bordello Alexandra Apartments. It was originally built in 1906 and rumored to have functioned as a bordello run by its namesake, Madame Alexandra, and an opium den. It fell into disrepair until it was purchased by Tony Wells and Brittany Stevenson in 2001. This eclectic apartment building is rented out to musicians and artists that don't mind being the constant object of tourist cameras. Well, it's inevitable. You spend enough time on the boardwalk and you are going to run into the man, the myth, the legend himself, Harry Perry. This guy is so iconic. You've probably seen him in a bunch of movies, television shows. He is so iconic that he prominently features in one of the largest murals in Venice. From Venice Beach, we're going to make our way up to the famous canals. When Abbott Kinney originally decided to build what he then called the Venice of America, it was here along these canals. These canals were actually dug because it was originally swampland. He dug the canals to drain out the swampland, but then he utilized the canals as part of the original plan. So uh, along the canals, there were hotels, there were casinos, um, there were things to do at events, and, and they actually did have gondolas that would go up and down the canals. Now, originally there was about 16 canals, but over time, they filled them in and they paid them over to make streets with them. And so now there's about six of them left. But there's still a lot of very, very beautiful and uh, quaint homes. Some of them uh, dating back to the early 1900s. A lot of bungalows here. Remember, this is the place where the Doors lived. Um, it's a, a city where well, there's a lot of artists, a lot of musicians come out of this community. And so this was just a really quiet, peaceful place. After the uh, amusement piers, and things went away, but uh, still a really nice place, quiet place to live. And uh, as you can see, some people are still out there on their boats.
this traffic interchange, traffic circle, rotary, whatever you want to call it, was once a lagoon. And so various canals came off of that lagoon. And then a short way up windward was the amusement pier. But it's all been filled in now. Now it's a traffic circle. And in the middle of it, they used to have a lot more art. Uh, they had Egyptian statues and a bunch of other things. Now there's just one statue out there. And I think part of the reason is they don't allow pedestrians out on the traffic circle. So there you go. Okay, we're now on Abbott Kinney Boulevard. And this was once a rundown neighborhood. It was originally called West Washington Boulevard, but the city founders decided to change the name in the late 1800s, and after that it started becoming a commercial success. So it's lined with kind of upscale shops. Um, there's some funky places to eat, and we're just gonna walk up and down, see what we can find. The Brig is a local bar that's been here forever. I mean, literally forever. Um, and it really hasn't changed too much. So it is so old that it was actually featured in a early episode of Starsky and Hutch. Yeah, the original Starsky and Hutch. So our first stop is at Salt and Straw, which is kind of weird because Salt and Straw is a favorite from Portland, Oregon. This is actually one of the first locations outside of Portland of uh, Salt and Straw. And I hadn't been a couple of years. You guys remember some of the episodes that we did there. So I'm going to go in and check to see what they have. Okay, so I waited in line. I'm kidding. There's there's no line. For some reason, there's no line. There's always a line at Salt and Straw. Uh, decided to try one of the newer flavors, one of the ones I haven't... Because you remember that I've you know, done these in the past, uh, Salt and Straw. So I got Spiced Goat Cheese Pumpkin Pie. So we're going to give this a shot and see what that tastes like. It looks like caramel. I hope it doesn't taste like that. Wow. So it has that slight sourness of goat cheese. Real strong taste of pumpkin. There's some crunchy bits in there. That's pretty good. I'm gonna finish this and head out and see what else we can find. All right, so the weird thing is, is that all you have to do is walk up the street a little bit and you find another Portland location. So now we're at Blue Star Donuts. Blue Star Donuts has been a picture in Portland for, for years. But, so I decided I was gonna stop in this one. They had a lot of good looking donuts. I did ask about the maple bacon donut, but you know, I think that's Voodoo's thing. So I got instead the blueberry bourbon basil. Basil? That's a lot to say. A lot of bees in there. The blueberry bourbon basil. So you can give this a shot right here. That. 
Oh, wow. 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 That's a unique flavor. I would think that the blueberry would be really prominent and that's what you would taste, but really not so much. Comes in afterwards. It's a, like a raised donut. So it's not like, it's not overly sweet, which is really nice. I need to follow this up with a cup of coffee. Is there a stump town around here? Yeah, this is gonna get a thumbs up for me. Now it's onward, something else. Venice is a, is a kitschy, historic, busy, crazy kind of place to visit, but no visit to LA should be without a stop at Venice, in Venice. So there's the canals, there's the boardwalk, there's Venice Beach itself. There's just so much to see and do here. But uh, if you decide you're going to come out here, please be careful because it's crazy out there. Please take care of yourselves, take care of others, and we'll see you soon. Thanks for checking out Trippy Food. If you enjoyed watching that video half as much as I did making it, well then I enjoyed it twice as much as you did. And if that's the case, you'll probably like this video right here. And if not, check out this video right here. That one's a little bit different. Either way, leave a comment down below. And be sure to subscribe by clicking on the Trippy Food icon right here. Glad you could make it, and we hope to see you again soon.